Genetically modified plants are created by adding genes to specifically change a particular trait of the plant. Plants that have been genetically modified are sometimes referred to as transgenic plants. To make a genetically modified plant, you need the following components. The DNA for the gene you want to express in the plant, including a promoter so the DNA is turned into the protein product, a way to tell which plants contain the DNA modification, and a way to get the DNA into the plant. And of course, a plant. The first item needed to make a genetically modified plant is a piece of DNA that encodes the desired trait. These genes can come from the same species or other species, or can be modifications of existing genes. Genetic modifications can improve a wide variety of plant features. Papaya ringspot virus almost wiped out papayas in Hawaii, but the expression of a ringspot protein gives sunspot papayas resistance to the virus, much like an immunization. BT products give corn and cotton resistance to borers and bollworms, insects that drill holes in the plant and kill it. Golden rice was engineered to prevent blindness caused by vitamin A deficiency. Other modifications make the plant herbicide resistant, so a farmer can tend to a much larger acreage by spraying herbicides instead of plowing or manual weeding. There are also genetic modifications to facilitate farming under harsh conditions like drought or salinity. Finally, some genetic modifications modify the properties of the plant itself, such as increasing the size or decreasing the growing time of the plant, or changing qualities like browning when an apple is cut. In addition to the DNA that codes for the desired trait, a plant-specific promoter sequence is required. The promoter acts as the start point for transcription. The promoter that is most commonly used in genetically modified plants is derived from cauliflower mosaic virus and is abbreviated CAMV35S. We are going to need a lot of DNA to make a transgenic plant. The easiest way to make a large number of copies of your target DNA is to use bacteria as a copy machine. To do this, the DNA must be in a circular form and contain an origin of replication. This circular DNA that can be replicated is called a plasmid and is often represented as a circle with key features indicated with color blocks and arrows. So now we have the DNA for the desired trait, the promoter so the trait will be transcribed into RNA, all in a plasmid that can be replicated in a bacterial cell. But how are we going to tell if the DNA is in the cell? The most common strategy is to add an antibiotic resistance gene to the plasmid. If the bacteria is grown on plates containing the antibiotic, only the cells that contain the plasmid will grow. Let's review the components we need to make a transgenic plant. We need the DNA that codes for the desired trait. Check with a promoter so the sequence will be transcribed and translated. Check. We need a way to select for cells that contain our DNA. A plasmid with an antibiotic resistance gene meets this requirement. Check. Now all we need is a way to get the DNA into the plant. There are two different ways that are commonly used to get DNA into a plant. The first technique is a brute force method, a gene gun. Gene guns fire DNA coated gold particles at the plant cells and hope that some of them end up in the right place. Let's look at how a gene gun works up close. The gold particle is coated with DNA that includes the promoter, the sequence for the desired trait, and a selection marker. The gold particles are fired at the plant cells with enough force to go through the cell wall and plasma membrane and hopefully land in the nucleus. This strategy has the advantage of not needing extra DNA from the plasmid, but it is damaging to cells and hard to control. The DNA is randomly incorporated into the chromosomes through DNA repair mechanisms, but could alter the expression of necessary plant genes or end up in the mitochondrial or chloroplast genome instead of the nuclear genome. Obviously, another approach would be beneficial. Like many sophisticated techniques in biology, nature provides a model system. 
Do you see the tumor growing on this tree? It is caused by a bacterial infection with agrobacterium tumorifacians, often referred to as agrobacterium, or just agro. The agrobacterium transfers a segment of DNA from a plasmid into a plant cell, causing the plant cells to grow, thus causing the tumor, and produce a food product for the agrobacterium called opines. Let's look more closely at the tumor-inducing, or TI, plasmid. This is a very large plasmid, containing almost 200 genes and over 200,000 base pairs. Like all plasmids, it contains an origin of replication so that the plasmid can be copied. Like most bacteria, many of the genes are organized into operons so that the activation of one promoter triggers the transcription and translation of several gene products involved in the same process. There are a set of virulence genes required for infecting and transferring DNA to the plant. This is a separate operon containing genes required to metabolize the opines the plant will make for food for the bacteria. A section of the plasmid contains the sequence of DNA that will be transferred to the plant. This segment is called the transfer or tDNA and is defined by a left border and a right border sequence. The transfer DNA contains two main sections one that contains the genes that trigger tumor formation and a section that contains the genes to make the opines to feed the agrobacterium. The ends of the sequences to be transcribed in the plant are marked with naphthalene synthesis or NOS termination sequences. To use this plasmid to make transgenic plants, the sections that are harmful to the plant are removed and the genes to be transferred into the plants are added. The opine synthesis and breakdown genes are removed, as well as the tumor-inducing genes. The gene for the trait, as well as the plant promoter, is added in its place. Most of the time, a very strong promoter, such as the 35S cauliflower mosaic virus promoter, is used to ensure that the production of the desired gene is high. A second selectable marker is introduced with a bacterial promoter, to allow for selection of agrobacterium that contain the TI plasmid. The virulence genes remain as they are necessary to transfer the tDNA from the agrobacterium into the plant. The transfer of the TI plasmid from the agrobacterium involves the expression of a number of genes in the agrobacterium cell. Plant cells release a variety of small molecules. When one of these small molecules is detected by the agrobacterium, it triggers the expression of a transcription factor that initiates the transcription of the virulence genes on the TI plasmid. One of these gene products leads to the production of the tDNA sequence, which then moves through another virulence protein into the plant cell. Like the gene gun method, the tDNA is randomly incorporated into the chromosomal DNA but there is much less damage to the cell and no chance of incorporation into the chloroplast or mitochondrial DNA. So now we have the DNA for our desired trait, a selection method, and the choice of two different ways to get the DNA into the plant. Once the DNA is successfully integrated into the plant genome, the plant is described as transformed. But how do you grow a transgenic plant from the few cells that incorporated the new DNA. Under sterile conditions, the plant cells are grown on media that contains both the antibiotic for selection and plant hormones. The antibiotic ensures that only cells that were transformed will grow, and the plant hormones allow for the generation of an entire plant from just a few plant cells. After the plant has generated both the root and shoot portions of the plant, it can be transferred to regular soil and the new properties of the plant can be tested. So today we have seen that to make a transgenic plant, first the DNA sequence for a particular trait must be identified and a promoter sequence added to ensure the transcription of the DNA into the RNA once it is in the plant. This sequence is integrated into a plasmid containing a selectable marker such as an antibiotic resistance gene. The gene for the trait and the selectable marker are transferred into a plant cell with either a gene gun or agrobacterium media transformation 
and then an entire plant is regenerated using sterile culture conditions with antibiotic selection and plant hormones.